Ja. Mm. This is the Westminster Abbey, the most famous church in the United Kingdom, known for its coronation, royal weddings, and I believe burials as well. It has been a working religious site for nearly a thousand years. I gotta say, it does look pretty magnificent up close, and it sort of reminds me of the Notre Dame in a way. If you look up top, those are stained glass, if I'm not mistaken. Look at those details of the sculptures along the walls. That is really beautiful. I would strongly suggest that you drop by to visit. If I'm not mistaken, if you're entering for worship, it is free. But if you want to tour the place, you gotta buy an admission ticket. Anyway, on the other side is the Elizabeth Tower, better known as the Big Bad. The third tallest tower in the United Kingdom, standing at 96.3 meters. But we are not here for sightseeing, are we? We are here to eat. And today we are having the most renowned British dish in the world, the Beef Wellington. In order to sample the best iteration of this dish, we are going to the Savoy Grill, part of Gordon Ramsay restaurants. Yes, that Gordon Ramsay. We are going to try his Beef Wellington, that juicy fillet wrapped in a blanket of duck cell and crisp puff pastry showered with red wine juice. Mm. And if we still have stomach space, we might try out some Sunday rolls too. Who could resist a beautiful piece of roast beef accompanied by roast potatoes and Yorkshire pudding? Alright, that's enough of a teaser. Let's go! Word that comes to mind, posh, really posh restaurant located in the Savoy Hotel, and it just looks majestic. Really, huge classic chandeliers, yellow warm lights, portraits hanging on the wall, simple setting, white tablecloth. We have just ordered Gordon Ramsay's beef Wellington, and we are now served with a side of sourdough bread together with some smoked and salted butter. But before we go on eating that sourdough, let us talk a little bit about the history of the beef Wellington. There are a few variations as far as I understand, and I will pick the one that I find most appealing. So as the story goes, there is this battle called the Battle of Waterloo, and the Duke of Wellington beat Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo on 18 June 1815. And in order to celebrate his victory, they renamed a supposedly French dish, filet de beef en croute, to beef wellington. Yup. Anyway, what is a beef wellington? It's a piece of beef, usually tenderloin, that is first buttered with mustard, then wrapped in duxelle, which is fine diced mushrooms with shallots and onions, herb and spiced. Then it is wrapped again, either in crab or cured ham or both, and finally wrapped again in a layer of puff pastry before it's placed in the oven and baked until golden brown. Oh, it smells really good. Here it is, in all its glory, the beautiful Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington. And you could tell that they have some really nice, beautiful crust, golden brown here. And on the inside, parsley pancake is used to protect the crispiness of the puff pastry. You've got the mushroom duck cells. And inside, the beautiful tender piece of beef is still pink. Mm. And on the side, we have got, I believe, some caramelized onions, and I think maybe some fried shallots, I'm not sure. And pickle onion, and up top, maybe parsley or coriander. And on the side, we have got this, the red wine juice. Let us quickly pour the juice. Look at the red wine sauce just drizzling over that beef, and the beef looks so sucky. I can't wait to cut into this. Oh my god, the beef is really, really soft, I can already tell. And the puff pastry is definitely crispy. Okay, I'm gonna cut this into a smaller piece and off we go. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Puff pastry, definitely crispy and it's thin. And it's got a very nice fragrance of being baked. The Maya reaction, a little bit of caramelization on the surface, and the beef is tender, still got a bite to it. You get a little bit of its beefy flavor, the red wine juice. They made it really watery, so you still taste everything in the beef. I think it's done pretty well.
Hmm. Yep, the flavor of our pastry definitely plays a forefront. I could taste a little bit of the mustard as well, which has been buttered on the beef. However, I don't really taste the duck cell, which is a shame really. I think it's too little. We actually had a crash course a few days ago on Wellington. We went to Alain de Rose at the Connaught and they served the grouse Wellington on that day. I guess that is like what Wellington would be if it is perfection. This is done really well as well, but I really hope that the duck cell would have been more pronounced. Let's try the onion on the side. Oh, oh. there are two, like one bulb of onion cut into half, hidden right in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna cut. Oh, this is going to be so messy. I'm gonna try and grab a bit of everything, the pickle and everything. Okay, here we go, here we go. Mm. Oh, this one is good. This is very, it's very refreshing. It cuts down on the heaviness of the beef wellington. You've got some oil flavors from the fried shallots. The onion is tangy, it's sweet, it's juicy, it's succulent. Mm, and the pickled onions gives an extra additional tang as well. This is a very good combination with the beef wellington. I'm surprised. The side. I feel it outshone the main in a way. It's good. It's a very good side. Okay, I'm gonna pour on a little bit more of that red wine juice to moisten up that piece of beef. Because even though it is cooked pink, it is still a little bit bitey. Mm. Alright guys, while well, quite is busy devouring what remains of the beef wellington, we are going to talk about the next dish that we ordered, the Sunday Rose. The tradition in Britain where they come together every Sunday and then they will eat this huge slab of roast beef together with their accompaniments such as roasted potatoes, Yorkshire pudding and some glazed vegetables. And the origin of Sunday Rose was that the Brits, they really love to eat beef. But back then beef was really expensive. So what they did was the community would come together, they will buy a piece of beef and on Sunday, on their way to church, they would drop the beef off at the baker where they will use the baker's oven to roast the beef because apparently bakers, they don't open on Sundays. Four or five hours later, they will come back and then they'll pick up their roast beef and then they'll share it in the community. So that's how it happens. It's sort of like a get-together meal uh, which happens every Sunday. So yeah, I'm super excited to check out what the Savoy Grill has to offer in terms of Sunday roast. They are providing beef sirloin that is aged for 42 days. So I think it's going to be really flavorful because when you age the beef, you give it a sharper flavor. You dry it off a little bit. So it's got this more dense, more pat umami on the beef. This is the Sunday roast. And the beef wellington has a nice beefiness to it, but this is very present, very prominent beefiness. And I've got here, look at this nice tender beef. Mm, it's so beautiful. And we've got the Yorkshire pudding, and I think they upgraded uh, the version of the Yorkshire pudding, which is supposedly just like a fried bread. Here, I think they added some shredded beef within. And on the sides, we have got some vegetables, starting with some roast potatoes, some glazed carrots, and I believe this is called a sweet hard cabbage or the kispy cabbage. And of course, the very important juice, red wine juice, uh, same as the beef wellington. So without further ado, I want to try the beef first as it is without anything and see what it tastes like. I want to taste the intense umami of that roast. It's salted. You've got a very nice beef umami. But I thought as strong as I expected. I think because it is aged, so even though it's cooked perfectly, it's cooked pink right in the middle, it is still quite chewy. Maybe I got an edge there. I'm gonna pour some of that red wine juice on and cut another slice of the middle. Hopefully it's more tender. Okay, this is definitely a lot more tender, I can already tell. Oops, a little bit of the ash that I need to cut off. Okay, there we go, there we go. Mm. Mm. I think the sauce makes it better. I think it's a slightly different sauce compared to the beef wine one, even though they told me it's red wine juice as well. This is more savory, less alcohol. Tasting, but it pairs beautifully with this beef because it allows the flavor of the beef 
to be the main player of this dish. But it's a leaner cut of beef and it's each. You need to take a few chews to get through one piece. There's a little bit of difficulty. It takes a while to chew. Mm. Flavor is very good. The amount of chew though. It's not my personal preference. Alright, we're gonna move on to the Yorkshire pudding. This. It's basically a fried bread. Long ago, the Yorkshire pudding is not served with the main course, which is the roast beef. It's supposedly served as an appetizer. You start with the Yorkshire pudding, and it's supposed to be empty. You don't have shredded beef inside. And the idea is because meat is so expensive, you eat the Yorkshire pudding with the gravy first, and hopefully it fills you up. So it allows you to stretch the meat further. So that was the idea. Anyway, let us try this beautiful piece of bread. It's got a nice, crispy size. Hear that? <laughs> Let's tear it open and let's try this bread out. Mm. Oh, it's fragrant. It's still a quick burst of oil fragrance. Mm. Here's the recipe for Yorkshire pudding. It's very simple. I think it's just flour, eggs, milk, and then you put it into this, this uh, like, like a small little mold. You put oil in and then you bake them so they rise up like in a way like muffins, but they are sort of airy inside and it's crispy on the outside. I think it's done perfectly well. And I've got a little bit of that bitterness taste on the sides as well, the edges. But I'm gonna give the Yorkshire pudding a bath of red wine juice to sort of moisten it up a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna cut into it and eat it together with that shredder beef that looks so like a beef jerky. I'm super excited about this one because I can smell again the intense beef flavor. Oh. Mm, mm. There's an acidity in the sauce. Beautiful acidity. And that beef is really like sort of like a like a beef jerky, but not quite there yet. It's got a, a bit of bite. But it's quite intense with mummy. It's like a mummy bomb. And after the flavor of that beef, you get the fragrance of the Yorkshire pudding. And the sauce cuts down on the heaviness. This is tangy. Mm, your shampoo is good. Mm. Okay, we can't keep working on the carbs and the meats. We gotta touch the vegetables as well. But we're gonna move on with another carb first: the roast potatoes. Mm. Salty, crispy outside. Inside is very fluffy and soft. I could taste some form of lemon flavor. It sort of lightens the flavor a bit. It's decent. What about the carrot? Carrot is good. Inherent sweetness of the carrot. Not oily. Very good crunch. I actually like the carrot more than the potato. I think they sprinkle a little bit too much salt on the potato. It's really salty. I'm gonna try the cabbage now. Now I heard that the sweetheart cabbage is generally a sweeter, more tasty cabbage compared to your regular cabbage. So let's find out if it is true. It is sweeter. Very sweet. Natural sweetness is beautiful. It's not like overly sweet. And it's got a little bit of crunch to it. And I think they added fried shallots as well. So it gives that nice oil fragrance. Oh, I like this cabbage. This cabbage is good. Mm. All in all, I think. Very enjoyable Sunday rose. Personally, I felt that the meat is it's cooked right. I gotta say it's cooked right. It's definitely cooked right. But perhaps it's the choice of the cut. It just felt too chewy. But the Yorkshire pudding is good. And I love the vegetables, generally. Hey guys, we're at Gil's Bakery having some scones. Apparently, they are really famous for that. Mm. So, how is the scones? Uh, decent. Decent? Decent, yeah. 
Okay, great. And the reason why we are here seated outside, uh, probably not the best spot because of some sound, is because I want to show you the London Eye right behind us. That is the London Eye, an observation wheel on the south bank of River Thames. It's Europe's tallest observation wheel and it's the most popular tourist attraction in the United Kingdom with I think over 3 million visitors annually. So, we'll see if we have enough budget to ride the London Eye. If we do, you'll see at the end of the episode. Hopefully, we have that budget. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's talk about Plenty Time. Savoy Grill by Gordon Ramsay. I think it's a pretty complicated one, this one. Yep. Yeah. Let's talk about the Beef Wellington first. I think in terms of execution, it's done really well. Crisp, buttery puff pastry, juicy, succulent Chateaubriand with good beefy flavour, delicate red wine juice. Perhaps the mushroom duck cell could have had more potency as I could barely taste it. Yeah, that is actually quite true. I guess my main issue with this Wellington lies with the Chateaubriand itself. Perhaps the type of beef used. Because although it's cooked perfectly pink, it was more chewy than I would have liked. It's not rubbery though, don't get me wrong. Mm. The style for me was a side of onion in different flavours and textures. Good tang and sweetness to tone down on the heaviness of the Wellington. Great pairing on this dish. Yep. The Sunday roast again was prepared really well with a pink trout aged sirloin, a savoury red wine jus and crispy airy Yorkshire pudding with a delicious shredded beef filling. The vegetables were of a good quality too, each mm. maintaining their natural sweetness. That said, again, I guess our gripe lied with the beef itself. Perhaps because it was aged in a sirloin, it's chewier than I would have liked. But aside from that, the flavours were good and came together rather harmoniously. The service of the restaurant was good and pretty attentive. They were really accommodative of us filming there. And we ended with a couple of financier with hazelnut chocolate. Yeah, that was pretty tasty stuff. So, in conclusion, well executed dishes, mm -hmm. really well executed dishes, perhaps marred by the beef itself, which personally I felt was chewier than expected. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, uh, we will have to score Savoy Grill and OK on the gourmet plate, which means it is some good quality beef wellington mm -hmm. and Sunday roast. It does cost a pretty penny, and personally I find the beef to be a deal breaker for me at this price point. However, if you are interested to know what Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington tastes like, definitely pay them a visit. Yep. Nice peeps, pretty good stuff. So that's it for our food vlog of the day. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you have yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell button. We will see you again next week in London. Yep. Bye bye. Bye.